Hello YouTube, I hope you're doing well. Today we're on code.org, we're in unit 7, lesson 2, part 1. It says to run the program and read the code carefully with a partner. It tells us to discuss some questions with a partner and be prepared to share these answers with the class. It asks how the calculate function works, what are the arguments passed through the parameters in the calculate function, when is it called, what types of data does the parameter require in the calculate function? Where can you find that information? What is return? And what type of data? And then it gives us the challenge to modify the app and the code to add a divide button. And then in addition to displaying if the number is even or odd, if it is divisible by three. So let's go ahead and look at the app. We'll do three and three. We'll add them together. We see that we get the answer of six. Do four and one minus. We see that's odd. And we have multiplication. What if we click on this with no numbers entered? It says that NAN it just means not a number. Within the code, we see we have three on event clicks. Each one has a set text to the output label, which is here. Where it's getting that information is from this function call for calculate. One of the questions that we saw earlier was, what are the arguments? This section right here in each of these clicks are the arguments. So it's passing this string down into the calculate function. So if we scroll down, that's being pushed down into this function. Within this function, we see we have two variables created, one for number one and two. And then we have a variable for an answer. We see that number one is getting the text from this input box, and the second number is getting the input from the second input box. We then see an if calculation running. The first one is looking to see is that symbol, so those symbols are the plus, the minus, and the multiplication. Is that symbol equal to the plus? If it is, it's going to calculate the answer using number one plus number two. If not, it's going to pass it to this right here. Is that symbol equal to the minus? If it is, it's going to go ahead and make that calculation doing subtraction. And then if neither of those is correct, it's going to go ahead and look to the third, which is multiplying the answers together. It then goes down a little bit further, and we see a calculation here. It's looking to see in this if statement, is the answer mod 2 equal to 0? And what that does is it's looking to see if the number is even or odd. Now, how does it do this? Let's pretend that we have 4 mod 2. What it does is it's looking to see how many times does 2 go into 4. We know that it goes in twice. Is there a remainder on that? There isn't. It's 0. It comes back as even because 0 is equal to 0. The mod looks for the remainder. If it was 5 mod 2, we know that it would go in twice, but there would be a remainder of 1. Is 1 equal to 0? No, it's not. So 5 mod 2 is odd. Based upon whether answer mod 2 is equal to 0 or not, it's going to set two different text options. If it's even, it's going to go ahead and put that in the output box. If it's not even, it's going to go ahead and say the answer is an odd number. So just based upon that calculation. Then we have the answer variable being replaced. Right here, we were making a calculation, but we're replacing that with a string. So this is kind of a cool use of this variable. The variable is going to be the number one that was pulled in plus a space and then the symbol that was passed through another space with the number two variable. We then add an equal sign and then it spits out the answer that was given here in this if statement. And that becomes the new answer. The function then resets both of these input boxes and then returns this calculation all the way back up to the on event click that was made. Now that it has that, it's able to put that answer into the output label. Some of the main things as we look through that is we have our function and our function call. Within that, we do have arguments that are being passed down into the function. And then at the bottom, we have that return answer. Let's go in and look at adding a button and then also seeing if the number is divisible by three. We're going to go to the design view. And right here, we have the plus, the minus, and the multiplication. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this button over here. And I'm just going to click and drag these over. What I'm going to do is just click on the multiplication button and mimic the properties for this new button. We'll call the ID divide button. 
currently the text is set at button. The multiplication button here used an icon as the image. And if I click choose, I can see my files. I can link to an image. And then I can also assign an icon. Weirdly enough, we have multiplication, subtraction, and we have addition, but there's no division button. So what I'm gonna do is just set text instead of looking for a button to add. Now you could use the forward slash, or if you don't like the slash button, if you hit the Windows key, hold that down and hit period, you get the emoji section. And if we click here, we actually have a division button. And we can see that populates there. It's really up to you how you choose to make the button. Now that we've created the button, it honestly is cracking me up because it looks pretty funny, but I feel like it was the best choice for this job. Now that we've created that button, we need to create an on event. So we're in the UI controls. We'll go ahead and drag the on event out. Our ID is going to be divide button. On click is what we want. And we also want to set some text. So we'll click and drag that over. We're going to select output label. And right here is our function call with parameters. So we'll click and drag that over. We'll type in calculate. When you're typing that argument in, make sure you do space slash space with quotation marks around that so that it fits the pattern that we have set before us. We're going to scroll down now into our function. And what we want to do is we need to add another section to this if statement. So if I click here, notice that I get this empty box here. And here we want is symbol equal to the string that was above with multiplication. So then what we want to do is add to our else at the very bottom. For this, we want to go ahead and assign a variable. We'll do answer equal to number one divided by number two. Before we continue on modifying this app, let's go ahead and see if our calculation works. Do four divided by four. And we can see that that calculates and one is definitely odd. So we're good there. Now what we want to do is in addition to displaying if the number is even or odd, we want to see if the number is divisible by three. We're going to go ahead and just mimic what we see above. We'll go to the control. We'll drag in an if. We're looking to see if our answer mod three is equal to zero. If it is, we are going to set text. We're going to have to add another text box to output our answer. But let me go in and hit this plus because we're going to have two options here. So we'll get that going. Let's go back to the design section. And right here I have two boxes. This section here just outputs the calculation. What I'm going to do is just click and drag that up. And then we have this, the even odd label. I'm going to drag that up to make room for our next section. Now before, what I did was I just clicked and dragged one of the elements over. There's another way that we could have started our division button. With this selected, I can click duplicate. And it went ahead and it copied all of the settings for the previous box and just duplicated it. We'll call the ID on this mod3 label. And let's go back to our code. For our ID, we'll select mod3 label for each of these. And then what we'll put here Let me go ahead and review this before we run our code again. So right here, let's pretend we had an answer of nine. How many times does three go into nine? Well, three goes in three times. If we do nine minus nine, we get the remainder of zero. Zero would equal zero, and we would know that this is divisible by three because there's no remainder on this. What if we said 10 mod three? Again, we would see that three would go into 10 three times. 
but this time there would be a remainder of 1. Does 1 equal 0? It doesn't. So we would know that that answer is not divisible by 3. Let's go ahead and run this again. And we'll use our examples I just mentioned. 9 divided by 3. We see that we get the output of 3. 3 is an odd number. And the answer is divisible by 3. Let's try that 10 illustration that I just used. We can see that we get 3.3 .3 repeating. That answer is still odd. And our answer is not divisible by 3. This was a fun activity. And I say that because we're beginning to use all the things that we've learned from the very beginning of just using the design features of code.org to build an app. We talked about mod earlier in previous units. So we're getting to use that within our calculations. We're talking about on click events that are calling functions. Those calls have arguments that are being pushed through to different parameters. And then we're using calculations with if. At first, this can probably seem like a lot, but once you read through the code, you should be able to settle down. I do want to encourage you to click the version history, reset this back to its default so that you get an opportunity to rerun through this task before you hit finish. That way, you get an opportunity to really try and understand everything that's going on and see how all of the moving pieces are working together.